let's try and answer what is work. You need to have a force. The first requirement for work to be done is a force. The second thing, of course, is a displacement. And there, your textbook ends. But we're going to add a little piece to it. So you need a force, you need a displacement. And also, you need that displacement to be in the direction of the force that you apply. So what does that mean? You have a force, you have a displacement, then some work will be done. But there could be cases where there is a force and a displacement and there need, may not be any work done. Is that possible? Could there be a force and a displacement but no work done? So we will answer that question in a couple of minutes. So the first thing we need to do, answer the question, what is work? And what is work? As far as physics is concerned, it's the force multiplied by the displacement. So you take the force, you take the displacement, multiply the two, you get what is work done. That the capacity to do work is called energy, which is a pretty mundane definition if you ask me. You're going to take a definition that Richard Feynman said, which is a very simple definition. He said that we don't know much about energy. But what we do know is that it's some number that if you calculate very carefully, doesn't seem to change no matter what happens. So something happens in the middle, you check before that and after that, this number remains constant. Something happens again, before and after, it remains constant, as long as you measure it carefully. So what is this energy? It's just some number that refuses to change no matter what happens around it. It's a pretty interesting definition. And this is what we're going to call the law of conservation of energy in a while. But until then, what we have here is an idea called energy. And it, in one sense, it can be seen as uh, the capacity to do work. And we're going to tell you how that works. But the other way to look at it is that it's something that is invariant and does not change no matter what changes. And whenever something doesn't change, when so many other things change, we know that in physics, they become very, very important. They get names for themselves. When the same force was applied and many, many things changed, but one thing did not change, a new word was created. The same force on a football, on a basketball, on a volleyball, no matter what it was, created the same change in momentum. So as long as momentum did not change, it got a name. So similarly, this one quantity that does not change gets the name energy. So now, we're coming to our last leg of this the ideas that we've been discussing and uh, work is being done. But what is the rate at which this work is being done? So I might do 10 joules of work in one hour or 10 joules of work in just one second. And these two can't be the same. right? So we have a quantity to define this. It's called power, which is the rate at which work is done or the work done divided by the time. Which means that if you have a power of say five, let's define the unit in a while. It means that for every unit of time, you'll be doing five joules of work. Five joules of work are being done for every unit of time. And this unit is called Watt, named after James Watt. So power is measured in watts. And if somebody does five, has five watts of power, it it's, it's means that for every unit of time, which is in this case, second, five joules of energies or five joules of work is being done. Great. Now it so happens that the watt is a pretty small unit. So usually we measure commercial units at kilowatts. So if at home, you'll probably be consuming kilowatts rather than watts. And even energy, if you want to take the commercial unit of energy, it's not really joules. Joules happen to be a very, very small unit. If we measure things in joules, we'll be talking in millions of joules or billions of joules. And that's very inconvenient. So what we do is we define something called kilowatt R. Just like kilowatt defines power, kilowatt R is a unit to define joules. And one kilowatt R is actually 3.6 in 10 to the power of 9. 3.6 in 10 to the power of 9 joules. So one kilowatt R comes to that much. So the commercial unit is a lot larger than our SI unit of one joule. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Byju's, the learning app today.